All right, hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. We're actually going to do a tutorial today. Um, so I decided I want to start doing more of these just because it's been a while. I've been really just doing streams and everything. Um, so I'm going to start doing tutorials about the things that I learned while working on that radial impact game. I'm still working on it, but I've learned a lot along the way. So I definitely want to start teaching you guys things that I learned. Uh, hopefully they'll help you guys out in your own projects. So uh, what I'm going to teach you today is basically how to reference blueprints from one blueprint to the other, how to get them to talk to each other properly, because that was one of the first things I had to learn you know, to do correctly to get everything working. So I'll show you what we're going to make. It's very, very simple. What we're going to do is we have two boxes. One here is a trigger box. The other box is a box that moves upwards when this one is touched. So they're both blueprints. So if we touch this one, we see that this box is moving up and up and up and up and up and up. And uh, <laughs> so we basically have a, a trigger volume basically in, the, in a box that references and gets reference to it. So that's what we're going to make. Uh, we're basically going to start from scratch. We have these two blueprints here. So let me go ahead and remove them from our scene. And let me also remove them from our content browser. All right. So we're going to start from scratch again. It's Two blueprints, very simple, pretty straightforward, but it gives you the idea of exactly what we're gonna, you're going to need to do in your own projects. So let's go ahead and right click, let's make a blueprint. It's going to be an actor. Let's call it BP. Oh, this is a problem I'm having. My file names are way too long, so I have to create them in my main folder first. So again, blueprint actor, let's call this BP trigger box. And then let's move that over to blueprints. Then blueprints, tutorials, and right here. So we're going to make this one first. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what I like to do, uh, I like to put a billboard in. It's a nice little raptor claw face thing. Name it root. And then we need a box. So let's go into stack meshes. I have one called SM Player uh, from when I was working on some stuff. So this cube is going to be good for us. All you got to make sure is that it has collision. You can Create your own collision up here if you have none. Like six of the OP simplified collision. Gives you a simple box collision. We don't need anything fancy. So with that selected in our content browser, let's add a component. It's gonna be static mesh. And we're gonna name this trigger box. It's gonna change the scale uh, to 0.5 in our axis. And we want to change this collision to just overlap all. So we can have the player touch it and everything like that. And then in the main event graph, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select the trigger box here in our uh, variables here. And we're going to right click in the space as so an event, collision, and then begin overlap. And just to test that it's getting collision, let's do print string. We'll just do hello world. Let's compile that. Let's go into our folder, save it, put it into our scene. So now when we play, should just say hello in the corner. Yep. Hello. Oh. <laughs> so we know that's working. So that's all we really need to do for this one for right now. So let's go back into the content browser. Uh, let's create a new blueprint. It's going to be an actor. You can name it blueprint underscore moving box. And then for me, I just got to move it to our folders here. All right. So let's double click on that. Same thing goes, we're going to make a billboard first just so it's our root. Name it root. Now let's go into our content browser, static meshes. Let's grab another box. Add component, static mesh actor. Uh, we're going to call this moving box. Uh, might as well change the scaling. We'll do uh, 0.75 on all axes. Compile that, save it. Let's go into our graph. Grab a reference to our moving box. So if you hold down Control and left click drag, you'll get a get for the variable instead of a set. So what we're going to get, or we want to basically we want to have the box move up. So basically we have to get its relative location, and then we basically need to add to its location. So we're going to do vector plus vector, and basically what I'm going to add to it. Uh, we can create another vector, or we can just add the number 10 to it. So we're going to do that. 
Uh, but let's grab another get reference here. We're going to do set relative location. And that's going to be our new location, that addition of our vectors. And then we need an event to call this. So we're going to do a custom event. We're going to call it move box. Plug that in. So now every time move box is called, the basically the location of this box is going to move upwards by 10 units. That's all we really want to have set up here. So let's go ahead and uh, compile this and save it. Now uh, we're going to put it into our scene. So let's go into our blueprints. Let's add it over here. And now we're going to do the basic meat and potatoes of what we need to do at this point. Because right now when we begin overlap it doesn't do anything. We need to call that function or that event I should mm -hmm. say. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into the construction script. And this is where we basically uh, call to get, a, a, we basically cast a variable to that class. That's basically all that is. So we have a reference to that class and all of its properties like its events, other variables, things of that nature. So what we need to do, we need to drag that out. We're going to have to start with a get all actors of class. So basically we're saying, hey, let's get all the actors of this class, and we're going to put whatever references we have into one variable. So the actor class is going to be moving box. So if we just type that in, moving box is right there. Now we need to take all the actors, basically, hey, all these objects in this array, we basically need to get all of them. we got to get that array, and then we need to cast all those actors to the moving box. And then, so basically we get all the actors, we cast it to this moving box, and then all we have to do is make a variable from it. So we're going to drag that out, we're going to hit promote to variable, and we're just going to name this uh, moving box reference. And that's all we really need to do in the construction script. So now what we can do, we have this variable over here, moving box reference. Let's get that, drag it out. Now if we type in move box, there's our function. So let's click on that, plug it in, and there we go. It's as simple as that. Now we need to test to see if it's working. So let's go into our scene, let's save everything. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So now if we touch this box right here, that box should move up by 10 units. And it does. Zua. And it's working. Perfect. So pretty straight. Forward. Um, this is, it was something that I had to dig deep for to learn how to do this. Um, so I wanted to make sure this tutorial was accessible to you guys because uh, this definitely is useful. You're definitely going to need how to do this um, if you're going to make your own games or you know if you do any kind of level design, anything that requires multiple blueprints talking to each other, things of that nature. So all we did, you know, we made our function the move box. We took the location of the moving box. We added 10 units to the Z. We set that as a new location every time move box is called. And then in the trigger box, we made a moving box reference in the construction script. We got all the actors. We got them all in that array. We casted them to that blueprint, and then we set it as a variable. And then we took the variable. We can call moving box, and we just plug it in, and it's all good to go. Uh, so with that, that it's, this one's going to be a relatively quick tutorial. It's a little tiny tidbit of information I'm sure you guys definitely are looking for. Um, so if you like the video, definitely like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, also leave a comment with more information if you want to learn something else, if there's been trouble you're running into with Unreal Engine 4 or, you know, UDK on Unreal Engine 3. Um, and also um, definitely comment with more, you know, if you want other information, if you want me to do more, if you like the streaming that I've been doing, if you're curious about the game I'm working on, uh, definitely leave comments in there. I definitely appreciate that. Um, but also share this video to others that you know are having this kind of issue or are struggling with this kind of issue because it will definitely help them out too. Um, so this is it for this tutorial, guys. I want to thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.